In the early hours of February the 3rd, a surprise attack by an ISIS cell resulted in the deaths of at least 12 pro-Syrian government fighters. There has been an increased intensity of ISIS attacks in recent weeks. It is quite self-evident that this arose amid Israel's continued attacks on Syrian army positions and civilian infrastructure under the pretext that they host Iranian forces. Even if the Syrian Arab army is preoccupied with defense, its allies, in the form of Russia and Iran, are picking up the slack. Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, IRGC, is set to establish a tribal force in Deir Zor. The main aim of this force will be to support the Iranian and pro-Iranian forces in the region and to serve in a style similar to the ISIS hunters. Despite Israel's best efforts, Tehran's influence in Syria is growing, and this is more evidence of that. A region that has received less attention in recent weeks due to the general chaos is Idlib. Russian warplanes continue pounding the Al-Qaeda-linked moderate opposition in the area, attempting to put a stop to its adventurism beyond the demilitarized zone. The ceasefire must hold, and Moscow attempts to limit militants' attempts to compromise it. Meanwhile, the terrorists in Idlib are being whitewashed and presented anew as freedom fighters. PBS Frontline presented the head of Jabhat al-Nusra, currently Hayat Tahrir al-Sham, as a reformed hero working towards peace. For years, he had a $10 million bounty on his head for leading the world's number one terrorist organization. That appears to be no more. He is now a hero fighting against suppression. The chaos in the Middle East is growing amid increasing Israeli activity and renewed attempts to whitewash known terrorists by MSM. Despite Damascus, Moscow's and Tehran's best efforts, the situation has the potential to get much worse before it gets any better.